If you love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz. This review today was supposed to be with Zero. Zero came down with a, a flu, I think. He's got the same thing I had, actually, last week. So uh, he will not be able to review this movie. Hope he feels better soon. And if he does, he'll be back in two weeks for our review. Furiosa Mad Max Saga. So this is the sequel to Mad Max Fury Road. I guess I'll go into what my thoughts were with Fury Road when I first saw it. I liked it a good amount, but the honest truth was it was a lot of the spectacle that really got me into the movie and nothing about the story or character. In fact, the story and characters were pretty threadbare, but that was by design of the movie. The movie is supposed to be like a very breakneck pace kind of movie and you have all these crazy action sequences, and then you have Charlize Theron, who is Furiosa, who is really holding the film down just by embodying this character. Again, the character itself is not really that great, but Theron makes it highly enjoyable to watch her in the film. Coming into this, I was expecting a much deeper portrayal of the character that was in Mad Max Fury Road. And I guess I have a question because honestly, isn't the prequel supposed to be about that? Isn't the prequel supposed to be about deepening a character from a previous movie? Especially if the movie is based solely on that character? Because I gotta tell you something, this isn't so deep at all. And the fact is that this film is about two and a half hours long. Two and a half hours long. And I know about as much about that character that I did in Fury Road. I know what happened to her and what made her into what she was in Fury Road, but do I know a lot about the character? No. And a lot of the reason is, is because the character of Furiosa doesn't talk throughout more than half of the film. Whether she is the young Furiosa, who is played by Elia Brown, or if it's the older Furiosa, who is played by Anya Taylor-Joy, there isn't any dialogue with this character until I would say about a little more than halfway through the film. And what you learn is not much, really. All you really learn is that Furiosa wants to get back to her people. That's it. That's all you need to know. That's all the film wants you to know about Furiosa. And honestly, that's kind of a big problem with a movie that is supposed to be about a singular character and getting to know her backstory. Because the film has also got a much slower pace that doesn't help with the lack of depth in story and characters. What made Fury Road work, despite the fact that the characters and the story was not all that deep, was just a breakneck pace. It seems like a lot happened all at once even though there were periods of time where there was slowdown, it didn't keep it on that long. But this film is actually a lot more of a slower pace, and I think that's really to its detriment. The reason why you would have that slower pace is that you want to get to know these characters, and you want to envelope into yourself into this story, and honestly, it just doesn't work that way in this movie. But what I will say is the visuals and action in Fury Road is great, but it's as great as it was in Fury Road. It's not a step up, but it's just about that level, maybe even a little below in my end. The thing that really stuck out to me as I was watching this film is that what made Fury Road so good was the absolute batshit insanity, the fast pace, and the action. Everything about it was a really off kilter, but exciting, but it doesn't work the second time around. You do have some good action scenes. I think the visuals are very good in this. But if you saw Fury Road, you already know what these visuals are. It's really nothing new. So if you're expecting it to like do something different like Fury Road did, no, no. It, it does about the same that Fury Road did. And that might be good for you when it comes to that end. But honestly, if you're expecting something that would be steps above that, not there in this movie. I will say there is one element of this film that is better than what Fury Road did, and that was the villain, which is Dr. Dementis, who is played with this scenery-chewing zeal by Chris Hemsworth. My god, I did not expect this from Chris Hemsworth. I know he's done a few other films where he's more of a villainous type, but in this film, I think he played this character really well. And honestly, any scene he's in is honestly better as the film goes on. He plays this character with this kind of snidely whiplash-esque voice. I think with some would be annoying, but to me, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm buying into this. <laughs> this is cool. And he just really owns the craziness of this character and this ruthlessness this character has. I am used to seeing Chris Hemsworth as like a baby face hero and to see him in this character and just relishing this time with him. But I think it was really one of the highlights of this film. But honestly, if I'm comparing this movie to Fury Road, 
the honest thing I would say is this would be a film that I would watch only if you were really into Fury Road. If you just want more Fury Road, then yes, I'd give this a shot. This wouldn't be something where I would say like, yo, you have to see this if you're into action. Eh, I guess you could do that. But honestly, Fury Road does a lot of things better than this movie does. And that's kind of a disappointment because the main weakness with Fury Road was the characters and the story. But the way that the action was in that film more than made up for it. It feels like in this movie they tried to make the characters more interesting, but they failed on that end. Especially Furiosa. What made Furiosa so compelling in Fury Road was Charlize Theron. I think Anya Taylor-Joy does a decent job, but she's not given much in this. I would have to say, only watch this if you really just want a continuation of Fury Road. So overall, I will recommend Furiosa A Mad Max Saga. Look, the visuals and action are just as good as they were in Fury Road, and I think the villainous turn of Chris Hemsworth as Dr. Dementis was great in this movie. I think the way that he chews scenery and the way that he just performs this character, I think is really good. But that said, it has the same weaknesses that Fury Road had when it comes to characters and story, and the slower pace of this film makes that weakness much more glaring. It's kind of a disappointment for me, but honestly, I would say that if you are interested in this movie because you really liked Fury Road and you want more Fury Road, go for it. But honestly, it's an okay movie. I think it's way too long, and with a lack of character development that the movie drags, but the visuals and the action are just enough for me to be like, okay, I had a decent time watching this, but really nothing more than that. So overall, I recommend Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. It is on Max streaming if you want to check that out, but yeah, it's a good time. Now, if you want my full review on this movie, you can go to my website at, at IamTheWiz.com. You'll have my full written review right on the site, along with a link to the video that has this review that you've just listened to. Thank you for listening to this review. If you want to know what we're reviewing in the next couple days, you can look on the screen right now to see what's coming up next. If you like what you heard, go ahead and leave a like on this video. If you want to discuss your opinion on the film or the review itself, please leave a comment. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for listening. I will talk to you next time.